coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next C++ Lego 5 platformer tutorial. And in this tutorial we will be doing um, some entity collisions. So what to start off what I want you to do is go to your entity manager.h and add in our entity collision uh, void function. And sorry for the thunder if you can hear that. It's raining pretty hard right now. Um, and then the parameters we want to add in our entity, entity manager instance, and we call this E2. So on our entity collision, what we're going to do, we create our method right here, and we're going to do a loop through the entities dot size, and we're going to do a nested loop entities dot no sorry E2 dot entities dot size okay so now what we want to do is we want to check if the entities intersect with each other right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that if entities I and remember we have to do the the pointer symbol because the entities are pointers so we say if entities I rect intersects e2 dot entities j rect and we have to dereference it so if they intersect then we're going to call a method called entities entities i on collision and we never made this method yet so uh and we're going to have to pass in e2 dot entities entities j so we haven't made the un on collision method yet and so we will make that right away so uh what we're going to do is we're going to go to our entity dot h and we're going to make a virtual void on collision and in this on collision we're going to pass in an entity and we'll just call this E2 for entity 2. And uh, we'll just go to our entity.cpp. Void entity on collision. Pass in the entity instance. And voila. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Sorry. Oh, because I set entity as a pure virtual, pure, uh, as a abstract class, then we're not able to do that. So what we're going to do is just get rid of this, uh, on the load content, it's, we, I'm not sure if you could see it, but it was, it said equal zero. We, so we're going to make it a non, we're going to just make it a regular parent base class rather than a pure virtual, rather than an abstract class, sorry. So... Uh, we've got that uh, set down so now we're gonna go to our player class and this is a tough thing about C++ because when you change something uh, adding it to a header file and then a CPP file can take up some time sometimes but we have our collision our on collision and we're going to be passing an entity instance and we will go to our enemy dot h so let me find it and we'll add in a on collision and then we will go to our player dot cpp and we will go to our on collision so we'll create one so player on collision and sorry my battery's about to die let's bring up my charger okay so on collision so when the player collides with the enemy what is going to happen so when it collides with the enemy all we'll do is we'll write something to the console window and we don't have iostream included so I'll just go to entity.h just to make it easier iostream so it'll be included in both the enemy and the player class 
So we'll make a call to SCDC out and we'll say collision or player collision. And that's it. And we also want to call the E2s on collision as well. And we will say uh, on collision with or actually that would call cause re recursion. Uh, so no, we will not do that. What we can do though is in the entity manager right here, we can call entities I on collision and we can call E2 dot entities dot J on collision with uh, entities I and we got to dereference these but so what we'll do is that we'll call both of the on collision methods now the reason why you want to call both of their methods is because uh, uh, say for example when the player collides with the enemy let's say you want the enemy to die or whatever right on the collision the player might do something a certain action to kill the enemy and then when we do a collision we want the player we want the enemy to actually die so when we call player on collision it will do whatever action needs to do and when we call enemy on collision it will run a method or whatever to make the enemy disappear so that's why you want to run both uh, collision methods. So in the player class, we'll just say player collision. And in the enemy class, we'll just create our on collision. And we'll pass it our entity instance. And Oh, give us an error for a second. And then what we will call is we will just say SCDC out uh, enemy collision. So simple enough. So we've got that set up. So now all we got to do is go to our gameplay screen.cpp and we will just make a call to us just to say player entity collision. And then we'll pass in the enemies. And this will handle all the collisions for us. So, if we run this program, hopefully we don't have any errors, but I have a feeling we do. I have a feeling I missed something. I always have that feeling. But let's just wait for this to compile. So, it compiled. And when they touch, you see it says enemy collision and player collision. So, when the enemy was to touch a player, it activated both of their collisions okay uh so that is basically it for this tutorial and remember everything i do is not set in stone this is really not the most efficient way to go about it there are there are more efficient ways to go about it and there are better ways to go about it um there's some ways that you might find more convenient there might be ways that i find more convenient so feel free to explore if you don't agree with this method, feel free to add in your own, but this is just a relatively easy way to add in collision into your platformer. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and bye for now.